Today, I'm building the best crypto portfolio to maximize my potential profits. The 2024 crypto bull market will be the last cycle where retail investors can make generational wealth before the big institutions come in and own the industry. This is why today I'll be covering the top projects that I think are set to take off in the bull run. I'll give you the reasons why I like each of these altcoin picks and I'll also cover how much I hold of each coin in my portfolio. Welcome back to the Virtual Bacon channel. My name is Dennis. I'm a crypto angel investor for the past five years and I have invested in over 100 crypto startups. On this channel, I share my views on market trends and investing strategy to build wealth in crypto. Right now is the best time to create a crypto portfolio because we are in the early stages of the new bull market. 2024 will be a great year for crypto investors because three huge catalyst events are coming to the market. Number one, we have the Bitcoin spot ETF, which is most likely going to be approved in January of 2024 as predicted by most analysts. This will finally bring US institutional investors to Bitcoin. Number two, we also have the next Bitcoin halving event coming in April of 2024. This usually kicks off the four-year crypto cycle. Lastly, we have the Fed potentially pausing interest rate hikes at the end of 2023 and going back to monetary easing by late 2024. This means the money printer will be turning back on and all risk on assets, including crypto, will be stimulated again like in 2021. Combined with the positive price action in late 2023, I think it's safe to assume that the bull market is starting and I won't be waiting for lower prices to buy in. Instead, now is the time to get deep in the market and accumulate undervalued altcoins that I have been waiting to enter. I also want to mention that coins that did well in the last cycle won't necessarily do well in the new cycle as crypto investors are quick to move on to new narratives when the four-year cycle repeats. This is why in today's video, we will not only include some popular altcoins that most people already know, but also a list of undervalued altcoin gems that I think could gather significant mindshare and take over the market in this upcoming cycle. Okay, in order to choose these altcoins in my portfolio, I considered similar factors to our 2023 portfolio video, but I removed the bear market survival criterion since we are in a much different market condition today. So this year's criteria are number one is the project in a narrative that's likely to see hype again in this new cycle. Number two is the project's team motivated to continue working on the project. Are they showing good progress? Number three is the project a leader in its sector and continuing to grow its dominance. And number four, how big is the fully diluted valuation of the project? Can the token see at least a 10x return in an ideal scenario? Now I chose the requirement of a 10x return since this is the bare minimum returns in a bull market that I expect for a strong altcoin. This is relative to my price targets for Bitcoin and Ethereum in this cycle. I have already made full price prediction videos for both Bitcoin and Ethereum on the channel. You should go watch them for more context. But in summary, I expect Bitcoin to hit $200,000 by late 2025 and Ethereum to hit $15,000 in the same period. This gives Bitcoin a 5.5x return from its current price of $37,000 thousand dollars and ethereum a 7.5x return from two thousand dollars now with these numbers in mind i only consider an altcoin investment to be worthwhile if it can outperform ethereum by a decent margin thus i chose 10x return as a whole number which gives 33 percent of extra returns on top of ethereum this is my baseline expectation in order to get into any altcoin a lot of you likely found me from my 2023 crypto portfolio video and to date it's the best video i've done on the channel with all over 400,000 views. So before we get into the 2024 video, I also want to do an update on last year's choices to explain which altcoins I'm taking out this year. Here's a summary of my portfolio from last year's video. Now in this year's portfolio, I took out most of the alternative layer ones from the portfolio. Specifically, they are number one, Solana. I took Solana out of the portfolio because in my opinion, Solana's current valuation is too expensive to do another 10x in this bull run. With its current full fully diluted valuation of $30 billion, in order for it to do a 10x return, that's going to be $300 billion in market cap. Those kinds of targets are rarely achieved outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum. The only two times that it has been achieved before is at the Pico top of XRP's bull run in 2018, and then with BNB's bull run Pico top in 2021. I do think Solana will do well in this cycle, and you can check my price prediction video for Solana for this as well. I think Solana has a good chance to hit 
it at least $100 and could even revisit its previous all-time high at $250. But that's only a 5x return from the current price. And for that reason, I don't think Solana is necessarily a great investment compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum from this point. Couple other big changes. I took out Cosmos Atom token from the portfolio and replaced it with its ecosystem token. I'll explain this in depth in the video. Another one I took out is Telegram's Tong coin. Also because this crypto is currently valued at over $11 billion and I don't see it doing another 10x to reach $110 billion. Similarly for Filecoin, I also took it out of the portfolio for the same reason. I don't see Filecoin reaching $90 billion. I had a good hope for it to drop much lower this year in the bear market, but it didn't. So now I'm taking it out of the portfolio. A couple more layer ones didn't make it this year, including Aptos and Sui, two of the upcoming layer ones that people were super hyped up about this year. But after they launched, it really seemed like not a lot of people are building on these chains. So I don't think they are relevant anymore. I'm also having a bittersweet farewell with Arweave. I had big hopes for this project as one of the alternative layer ones that's going for a storage solution use case. But in the entirety of 2023, they really didn't have any updates at all. No roadmap updates, no major announcements or partnerships. So I really think the team is no longer working on the project. And thus, I am also taking this out of the portfolio. And lastly, I replaced most of the decentralized exchange tokens from last year's portfolio, including including Uniswap, GMX, DYDX, and Apex. Although Uniswap is the most dominant decentralized exchange, it just doesn't want to share its trading fee and revenue with its token holders. So there's no point in holding this coin. And for the likes of perpetual exchanges such as GMX, DYDX, and Apex, these guys are not as dominant as I expected them to be. And there's potentially a new wave of innovative decentralized exchanges coming up, which we'll cover in the video. Okay, that wraps up last year's recap. Now let's finally get into this this year's portfolio. The first coin in my portfolio is, of course, Bitcoin, and it takes up 25% of the portfolio. The basis of my portfolio strategy is always heavily focused on the safe assets. This is why Bitcoin is the largest percentage in my portfolio at 25%. With my price target of 200K per Bitcoin, that's a 5.5x return from today's prices. No, Bitcoin doesn't have another 50x potential, but I'll never be upset with a 5.5x return in just two years. And really consider this. If you you are trying to invest in other cryptos, you have to be bullish on Bitcoin and have a baseline expectation for its performance. Every other crypto's performance depends heavily on the price of Bitcoin. So by having Bitcoin in my portfolio, I'm getting that long-term growth of the crypto industry slowly but surely. If you want to learn more about how I plan to invest in Bitcoin in this upcoming cycle and my entry and exit strategies, make sure to check out my Bitcoin investing video as well as my Bitcoin price prediction video, which are linked down in the description. Moving on, another huge part of my portfolio is Ethereum coming in at another 25%. In my opinion, Ethereum is no longer just another altcoin. Rather, its status is more like that of Bitcoin's being its own asset class. Ethereum is like the digital oil to Bitcoin's digital gold. Ethereum is also classified as a commodity alongside Bitcoin in so many court case filings. A standing like that is super important for long-term sustainability and for major TradFi institutions to adopt it. For the past three years, Ethereum has also maintained its 15 to 20% market dominance of the entire cryptocurrency market cap. A large dominance like that cannot be ignored. Ethereum also has a spot ETF filing from BlackRock and Fidelity, which gives it the same institutional demand as Bitcoin when these eventually come. If you want to see my Ethereum price target for the new bull run, check out my latest updated video on the Ethereum price prediction by 2025, which is linked down in the description. All in all, by by having Bitcoin and Ethereum both in my portfolio, I don't have to worry about them so much since I know they have the highest chance of actually achieving these targets. And I know that I will be able to catch at least a 5 to 7x return in the next couple years with half of my portfolio. This helps reduce the FOMO I feel when individual sectors of crypto pops off. Before we get into the altcoin picks, if you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a like and share it with a friend. Once this video gets 5,000 likes, I'll be dropping a new video 
for my highest potential altcoin picks in 2024, focusing on the hidden gems. Okay, now let's get into the portfolio. As usual, I grouped my choices into sectors of the crypto space. I have a total of 29 altcoins in this portfolio, and each sector takes up between 3% to 10.5% of the total portfolio, depending on how bullish I am in that sector. The first sector we have is Ethereum Layer 2s. And the first altcoin I have in this sector is Arbitrum coming in at 1%. Arbitrum is truly the king in DeFi Layer 2s. It has the highest TVL and fees among all Ethereum rollups because it's heavily driven by DeFi transactions. Today, Arbitrum ranks number four in all blockchains by total value locked and fees, and it ranks number one among all Layer 2s. Now, Arbitrum employs the technology of optimistic rollup, which is the easiest way to deploy and secure a Layer 2. It is also loved by the Ethereum community as most Ethereum maxis and projects are cross-deployed on Arbitrum. Transaction performances on Arbitrum is also very smooth. They go through in under two seconds and it truly feels like I'm interacting with a traditional website rather than a decentralized application. Now, since our 2023 video, I have been waiting to get my hands on this token, but I'm only putting 1% in it because the tokenomics are not great. Looking at the Arbitrum token unlock schedule, there is a major token an unlock happening in March of 2024. When this unlock happens, the circulating supply of Arbitrum will go from 1.4 billion tokens to 2.5 billion tokens. This is a pretty big jump. But after March 2024, the unlocks will become much more gradual as they are released every month. So there is no longer any large cliffs happening. This is why if you are looking to get into Arbitrum, I recommend waiting until after March of 2024 before getting in. The next layer two project in my portfolio is Optimism. OP token coming in at 1%. Optimism is the direct competitor to Arbitrum. It's named after the technology Optimistic Rollup, which is the technology behind both Arbitrum and Optimism. Although Optimism lagged behind Arbitrum in the early DeFi adoption, it has been catching up this year with their super chain initiative. The Optimism super chain allows partners to deploy their own layer 2s using the OP stack. These layer 2s will eventually all feed back to the OP token in a positive flywheel. Some major protocols that have launched under the super chain include Coinbase's base layer 2, Binance's OP BNB layer 2, Synthetix also is building a DeFi focused layer 2, there is Worldcoin which has built their layer 2 using OP, and Synapse Chain, another one that you might have heard of. Now, Optimism's mainnet performance is still not as smooth as Arbitrum if you are a frequent DeFi user, but they are leading the charge in onboarding large players to Ethereum with their own layer 2 app chains. Optimism's tokenomics is also looking better than that of Arbitrum. Arbitrums because their major token unlock event has already happened in June of 2023. So from now until 2027, the unlock schedule of the OP token will be very gradual, only released slowly over every month. There is no major cliff which will induce a lot of panic in the market. The next layer two project in my portfolio is Polygon coming in at 1%. Polygon first started as a side chain to Ethereum, but today it has a complete ZK rollup layer two solution for Ethereum. They are actually the most production ready ZK rollup solution and the first to go live to mainnet with their own ZK EVM in 2023. This was the first ZK layer 2 to launch on Ethereum with full EVM support, which means you can access it from MetaMask and use the Ethereum stack just like before. Now today, Polygon is also taking an app chain approach similar to that of Optimism. If you are an enterprise looking to build your own layer 2 for Ethereum, your top two choices are Optimism's stack for a optimistic rollup or Polygon's CDK for a ZK EVM rollup. Some of the major protocols launching their own layer 2s using Polygon CDK include OKX with their X1 chain, Immutable X that's launching their own ZK EVM, Neuro Protocol that's using Polygon CDK to explore becoming an Ethereum layer 2, there's Astar Network, Manta Network, and the list goes on. Lastly, Polygon is also migrating their Matic token to new tokenomics and changing the ticker to POL. P -O -L. With this new app chain design, Polygon's POL token will become the main staking token behind this layer that is used to secure all the underlying supernets and ZK EVM and the old Polygon POS sidechain all under this umbrella to be staked by using the POL token. Last thing I would say is that Polygon does have the best tokenomics among all the layer twos that we'll mention today. As it came out much earlier than the other competitors, so the circulating supply is almost all in the market today. Out of the 10 billion total supply, 92% of that is already circulating 
trading, which means there is very minimal sell pressure coming to the market. The last layer two project in my portfolio is ZK Sync coming in at another 1%. ZK Sync is the main competitor to Polygon, being the other top ZK layer two solution for Ethereum. Now, ZK Sync does have a much bigger DeFi adoption than Polygon. You can check this very clearly on L2 Beat by going and comparing all the TVL among all the layer two solutions. ZK Sync is the largest ZK EVM by total value locked numbers. This is because they take a very similar approach to Arbitrum by first attracting the DeFi users and the TVL and the money to deploy on the chain. This also means ZK Sync Eros mainnet works super smoothly similar to Arbitrum because this is the number one thing they wanted to focus on. Whether you're swapping, farming, etc., it truly feels like a Web2 type of experience. It's super fast. Now, one downside with ZK Sync is that the gas fees are still relatively higher than Arbitrum and other layer two rollups. They usually cost a few dollars for a DeFi swap, but ZK Sync does have a gas refund mechanism that returns 75 to 90% of the gas costs. On ZK Sync, there's also this feature that allows you to pay for gas fees using any ERC20 token instead of Ethereum natively. This removes another barrier of entry since people can only deal with the tokens they already have without having to buy some extra Ethereum in order to transact. Now, the introduction of the EIP 4844 upgrade in the beginning of 2024 should also lower the transaction fees of all layer twos by another 10 to 100 X. This means all layer two fees will be quite negligible being 10 cents, even one cent or sub one cent. Last thing to note, the ZK Sync token is not live yet, which means there is still an opportunity to get this token's airdrop by using the ZK Sync mainnet today and performing DeFi transactions. If you're interested, make sure to check out my ZK Sync 101 full deep dive video on the channel and also stay tuned for our updated ZK Sync airdrop video that's specifically targeted at the latest transactions you can do to maximize your chances. ZK Sync's token launch will likely be the biggest airdrop since Arbitrum with huge amounts of interest. So definitely pay attention to this one. Okay, those are the only four layer two projects in my portfolio. You see that layer twos actually take up a much smaller percentage of my portfolio, only at 4% total this year compared to last year when I had 5% in Polygon and 5% in Arbitrum and even more that's waiting for the upcoming layer twos. This is because I think most layer two tokens are relatively overvalued right now with heavy token unlocks upcoming. The only one that has most tokens circulating is Polygon, but it still has a relatively high valuation coming in at $8 billion. Don't get me wrong, layer twos are the future of Ethereum scaling and all transactions will happen on layer twos. I'm in full belief of this. And I do think these top four layer twos can do around 10x returns and reach between 50 to $100 billion in market cap by the bull run peak. But I don't think they can have exceptional returns and thus they only take up 1% each in my portfolio. If you want to dive deeper into all of the layer twos and compare them, make sure to check out my layer two tier list video that you can find down in the description where we cover not only the top four picks, but also some of the hidden gems that's up and coming with potential airdrops that you can still participate in. Next up in the portfolio categories, we have layer ones, alternatives to Ethereum. And no, we won't be talking about Avalanche or Phantom or any other Ethereum copies. Instead, we'll be focusing on layer one blockchains that are tackling unique use cases that Ethereum cannot cover. The first altcoin in my layer one category is actually ICP, and I have a decent chunk of it coming in at 2%. Although ICP had a rocky launch, it is the most advanced decentralized cloud infrastructure project by far. What makes ICP special is its ability to host a variety of applications, similar to the well-known cloud services like AWS or Google Cloud. Unlike other layer one blockchains, ICP uses something called canisters to provide a flexible hosting space for decentralized applications. This setup is similar to the usual cloud setup where you go through a gateway to reach the services you need. I have already covered ICP and compared it with other top decentralized cloud blockchains. You can go check that out on the video on our channel. Long story short, ICP compared to Filecoin and Arweave is truly next gen. It's not only able to support things like storage and smart contracts, contracts like Filecoin and Arweave can support. It also has native support for both front-end and back-end web hosting. This means you can build a full-stack web application that's completely decentralized using ICP. Not just the smart contracts, but everything in the stack can be decentralized. 
you can see some of these examples today. They even have a Uniswap front end that's completely cloned that you can use to access the Uniswap exchange, but it is hosted in a decentralized way using ICP. Also, there's even a Minecraft clone that's completely hosted on the ICP blockchain. How crazy is that? There's no server. There's nowhere that's storing this extra information to make this game run. It's completely on chain. Now, I know what you're thinking. ICP, isn't that the VC showed, you know, early investor dumpy type of project? Well, yes, they had a very rocky start, and this is because their price launched way too high at over $400. At that launch price, the fully diluted valuation is over $200 billion. It's way overvalued. In fact, even during 2021 and 2022, ICP was still quite heavily overvalued at $40, which was still over $20 billion in market cap. However, for the past year, ICP has been pretty much sitting at the floor between three to five dollars, which gives it a current market cap of around two billion dollars. That's quite more approachable. On top of this, majority of the token supply is already distributed with the total supply being 509 million tokens and the circulating supply coming in at 449 million. And you can verify this with the token tracker as well. Last but not least, the inflation schedule for ICP is looking at about 7% per year, which is quite low compared to most other other new projects. So funny enough, ICP's tokenomics is actually way better than that of most Ethereum layer twos out there. If you have to make the comparison, ICP is way less VC driven and insider driven than layer twos. For these reasons and the fact that ICP is truly tackling a niche that no other layer one can handle, I have a large chunk of ICP in my portfolio coming in at 2%. The next layer one project in my portfolio is Celestia coming in at another 2%. Instead of Copying Ethereum, Celestia takes a completely new design paradigm by making blockchains modular. This means they separate out the execution layer from the consensus layer. So with Ethereum and other layer one typical blockchains, you have the smart contracts and the consensus and all the data and execution all bundled into one, which means you're tied into one set of design choices and one smart contract language. With Celestia, however, you have any virtual machine that can be run on top of the consensus and data layer, which is separated in Celestia. This means you can run a Ethereum virtual machine, a Polkadot virtual machine, a Solana virtual machine using any smart contract programming language. This makes perfect sense in the new age of layer twos. All layer twos will need a place to store their data in case they need to be validated. This is where Celestia shines. They allow developers to create layer twos without giving them any bias. They can pick and choose whichever design and smart contract language they want, and they can all use Celestia's storage and consensus in order to make their layer layer twos decentralized. One other cool thing about Celestia is that they have light nodes that you can run on mobile phones and even Raspberry Pis. This is truly a first in the crypto industry. Many projects before have tried to make mobile mining a thing, but 99% of the time they are just a scam that's uh, running some dummy apps on your smartphone and generating fake tokens that's supposedly meant for mining. But this is not the case for Celestia. With an Android phone today, you can already run a light client for Celestia and actually participate in the consensus of the network and help secure the network and actually run these uh, data storage and consensus solutions for layer twos that's running on Celestia. This is all thanks to their unique algorithm called data availability sampling, which doesn't require you to download the full node of all the blocks of the Celestia blockchain. Instead, you only need to have a light version of all the data. Honestly, Celestia is one of the few real innovations in the blockchain space that I have seen for the past three years. This is why I have it as a bigger chunk of my portfolio coming in at 2%. Now, one thing you do need to note is that the Celestia tokenomics is still not great since it just launched in late 2023. Out of the 1 billion total supply, only 14% of that is currently circulating. This token supply will continue to grow from 140 million to 267 million in the next year. And on top of that, in November of 2024, another major token cliff will happen and the token supply will grow to 450 million tokens very quickly in one large unlock. Make sure to pay attention to this unlock event. If you want to stay on the conservative side, I would wait until after November 2024 before picking this up, because after that, the token unlock for Celestia will be much more gradual coming in daily, and 45% of the tokens will be already circulating after that point. The last and final layer one project in my portfolio is Neutron. It's a layer one that you might not have heard of and it's relatively new launched in 2022 
2023. But I truly think this has a lot of potential. Now, what is Neutron? Neutron is the top pick in my Cosmos ecosystem right now. And this is actually the successor to the Cosmos Atom token. This project is backed by the Interchain Foundation and the Atom Economic Zone with potential for significant growth in the altcoin market. Specifically, Neutron is looking to become the DeFi hub that Cosmos never achieved to be. Today, Cosmos with its app chains and so many different ecosystem tokens amount add up to over 50 billion tokens circulating and that's using the Cosmos technology. However, most of these liquidity are completely fragmented because Cosmos hub doesn't support smart contracts and thus there isn't one single place like on Ethereum where you can go and trade all kinds of tokens. This is where Neutron comes in that's becoming this consumer chain that does support smart contracts. As far as I know, most of the popular DeFi applications and tokens, liquid staking protocols, etc. are all migrating from Cosmos and other chains to Neutron. I have covered my thesis of Cosmos needing this DeFi hub in order to truly flourish in our latest Cosmos ecosystem video that you can go check out with the link in the description. Long story short, Cosmos is really missing this DeFi hub to bring in all of the fragmented liquidity and enable things like just basic swapping between different tokens, providing liquidity so you can yield farm and collect trading fees. You can do perpetual trading. You can do lending and borrowing. There just isn't one place that this all fits in. And this is where Neutron is potentially tapping into a multi-billion dollar industry and multi-billion dollars of fragmented liquidity. But long story short, this is my successor bet and replacement for Cosmos Atom token in this upcoming cycle. And this layer one token takes up 2% of my portfolio. As you can see, I only have three alternative layer ones in my 2024 portfolio and three very high conviction picks. I think layer ones will all be replaced with layer twos on Ethereum if you are not pivoting to your very unique use case that Ethereum cannot handle. Solana is another obvious pick, but like we already have covered, I think it will be hard to see another 10x gain from Solana because it's already at a $30 billion market cap. The next altcoin in my portfolio is Injective INJ, and this takes up 1%. This is also the first DeFi coin I have in my portfolio. Now, you guys might know of Injective as one of the strongest performing altcoins in the past year, rallying from dollar all the way up to $17 at the time of recording. But aside from the price performance, I think the fundamentals of Injective is also right in line and fits my Cosmos DeFi hub thesis. So if you guys didn't know, Injective is built using the Cosmos stack and is interoperable through the IBC or Inter Blockchain Communication Protocol. This means it's able to bring in all types of tokens into the platform in order for DeFi functionality. So it not only accesses Ethereum ERC20 tokens, but it can also bring in Cosmos tokens Solana tokens even, or BNB chain, or Kronos chain, or many other chains that already is built on top of the IBC communication layer. Now, in terms of actual product offering, Injective has a whole DeFi suite, including token swaps, providing liquidity, lending and borrowing protocol, perpetual exchange, order book exchange, etc. And you can try all of these by using their Helix app, which is built by the Injective team. Here you can see you can have a simple swapping interface, or you can trade on spot exchange, or you can even bet on long and short of any coin using the perpetual markets. There's even trading bots functionality. And unlike most of the other decentralized exchange out there that only exists in one ecosystem, on here, when you go to the accounts tab, you will have access to all types of assets, including ERC-20 tokens, stable coins, but also things like Matic, Ethereum, even Solana, Link, etc. And this list is still growing because there are many more assets that support it using the IBC stack. Overall, combining the DeFi hub thesis that I have for Cosmos and the fact that Cosmos will become this DeFi hub that bring in all types of token and liquidity in order to perform DeFi functionality by pairing them, and the fact that Injective is one of the best performing assets in the past year, I think Injective deserves a spot when you're picking up a DeFi portfolio. And that's why Injective is my first DeFi pick coming in at 1%. Next up in the portfolio, I have a category that I have not allocated to yet, and that's with upcoming decentralized exchanges. No, I'm not talking about you know Uniswap clones or perpetual exchanges like GMX or DYDX. Those are all older technology. They are established, but I don't think there's much higher price potential for them. Instead, I'm targeting new experimental exchanges. And once 
sector that I think is very interesting are these things called intent-based exchanges. How these exchanges work is actually very similar to how a OTC trade or over-the-counter works. Essentially, instead of having a liquidity pool on chain or a order book uh, where certain people provide liquidity, then you can trade with a intent-based decentralized exchange. You have a bilateral agreement directly between the trader and the liquidity provider. And this all happens OTC peer to peer. So here is a typical flow. When you want to trade on one of these exchanges, you send a limit order. For example, I want to long certain altcoin at a certain price. And here is how much I want. Then the counterparty or the other traders or market makers will come in and try to see if they can execute your position. If it makes sense for them based on the market price, they will take on your trade. Now, the main benefit of these types of decentralized exchanges is that you can access the liquidity and trading pairs directly on centralized exchanges, but access them in a decentralized way from your wallet. This means you can long and short any altcoin that's currently trading on Binance, but from DeFi and through your wallet and without having to go through a third party and without having to do any sign up. And this is all done in a decentralized way by having these intent pools and you being the intent user and all of the liquidity the providers coming in also as decentralized participants. Now, I think this design is super cool for two reasons. Number one, there's no pre-locked liquidity, which means the capital efficiency is super high. You have literally the best liquidity out there because it directly accesses centralized exchange without having to have these liquidity providers worrying about how you can attract these LP providers to come in. And second of all, this allows you to trade any exchange pair out there. You don't have to worry about exchange listings or having to sign up and go through KYC on any of the exchanges. It all happens in a decentralized way, but it gives you the best liquidity across any token you want on any centralized exchange. If these types of exchange take off, I think they could really be the next generation of on-chain trading that actually has comparable liquidity and execution like centralized exchanges. Now, a few projects that's building in this sector. The number one is Sim.io. This protocol is the underlying intent-based liquidity layer that all of the applications are built on top of. These are the guys that invented this types of trading. On top of this, there are two front-end applications that's built on top of SIM that's also using intent-based trading. The first one is called IntentX, and you can try this out by going on IntentX.io and try out their platform today. The other one that already has a token that you can buy right now is called AthenaFi, and they have a front-end interface that's tapped into the SIM.io liquidity that you can try and trade today. And very similarly, you can see that here you can long and short any market and these markets actually come from Binance. So you can see all of these trading pairs come from the Binance order book. Uh, that's pretty crazy. All in all, these are still very experimental uh, decentralized exchanges, but I think they have a lot of potential and probably a lot of upside as well. So I would say they are high risk, high reward, low cap uh, DeFi altcoins. And for that reason, I group all of these upcoming decentralized exchanges into one one category together and only putting in 1% total across all of these projects. These are only three that I have named, but I think there will be many more coming in in this same intent-based decentralized exchange category. Next up, also in the DeFi category, I have two LSD protocols. The first one is Prisma Finance coming in at 1%. Prisma Finance is a liquid staking protocol that uses these liquid staking tokens uh, you can find on Lido Stake Ethereum or Rocket Pool Ethereum, Coinbase Ethereum, etc. and use these tokens in order to mint a stable coin. Very similar to how MakerDAO's DAI token works in their CDP model. This allows the stable coin to have native yield, which is a great opportunity to earn passive income by still holding a stable coin that doesn't fluctuate at all. But these yields are real yield because it takes advantage of Ethereum staking. I think the opportunity here is massive as the stablecoin market is worth tens of billions of dollars, which are currently sitting idle and not earning yield. The overall growth of Ethereum staking will also see more money flow into all LSD protocols and Prisma will have a share of this market. In my view, the LSD space is kind of oversaturated now and I really want to bet on the novel takes instead of the market leaders like Lido and Rocket Pool. 
Hence why I think Prisma still has a lot of potential being a very new project. Another LSD project that I have in my portfolio is Pendo coming in at 1%. Pendo is a platform that lets you control your staking yield by locking them for fixed periods or receiving your yields early. Here you can see for Lido staked ETH, for example, you can select a maturity which will change your yield percentages, or you can provide liquidity for ST ETH and start earning extra yield on top by being an LP. If you are a real power user, you can even long and short the yield percentages by going in the advanced mode. I'm not going to touch this, but just in case you're interested. Pendo is the OG LST5 platform that has been working with all the major LSD protocols before this narrative became popular. Although Ethereum staking is still expected to grow, the upside of investing in the simple staking protocols like Lido or Rocketpool is quite small now due to how concentrated they are. So I think the higher order of protocols such as Prisma or Pendo that is really building the LSD Phi type of projects will have much higher upside to gain in the LSD wars. And lastly, I still have 2% of my portfolio that's reserved to to invest in future LSD projects. This is because the Ethereum staking market cap, I think, will continue to grow in this cycle. Looking at the Ethereum current staking ratio, it has actually one of the lowest staking ratios among all blockchains, currently at 23% of all Ethereum staked. In comparison to other layer one blockchains, for Solana, that's at 69%, Cardano, 64%, Aptos, 81%, BNB chain at 14% somehow, Avalanche, 58%, Sui, 82%, etc. So you see, Ethereum's staking ratio is actually quite low and as this number increases that means more and more ethereum will become staked which means they will pour into one of these staking protocols meaning that the lsd space overall still has a lot more growth potential this is why i still have two percent of my portfolio reserved for this sector moving on the next DeFi project and also kind of a cross-chain project in my portfolio is chainlink and chainlink is actually the biggest percentage in my portfolio other than bitcoin and ethereum coming in at four percent chainlink is on questionably the leader in DeFi oracles. It is a piece of infrastructure that every DeFi project needs to use in order to access data feeds. But on top of this, Chainlink is quickly becoming the go-to solution for RWA tokenization from the TradFi adoption. Chainlink's full suite of middleware solutions is also much wider than just oracles now. Here are some of their main product offerings today. They have their CCIP solution, which is a top three cross-chain interoperability solution. Then they have functions and automation, which allow Web2 developers to easily work with Ethereum smart contracts. This is exactly what the Web2 enterprise developers need in order to onboard onto Ethereum. Their data streams are also powering high-frequency decentralized exchanges like GMX. Every second when the price changes, it's powered by Chainlink. Lastly, their proof of reserves is crucial in verifying off-chain assets in order to bring them on-chain to fulfill this RWA tokenization in DeFi. I truly believe Chainlink will be the mandatory middleware layer that all Ethereum project developers will need to use in order to give their smart contracts superpowers and connect them with the Web2 world. And for these reasons, I believe Chainlink should become at least a top 10 coin, even a top 5 coin in the next cycle. And that gives it a potential market cap of 100 to 200 billion dollars. For my full price target, make sure to check out my Chainlink deep dive video that's linked in the description. But long story short, my optimism mystic target for Chainlink is at $240 per coin, and a more conservative target is at $100 per coin. With those numbers, I think Chainlink can do even over a 10x return, and for those reasons, I think Chainlink is still worth having in my portfolio today. Along with Chainlink, another cross-chain interoperability solution that I have in my portfolio is Layer 0, coming in at 1%. Layer 0 is the other market leader that you are most likely already familiar with. Just like Chainlink CCIP, Layer 0 also is a general purpose messaging layer between all different blockchains. It doesn't have a siloed ecosystem that the blockchains have to join, and it doesn't have any centralized token bridge that is prone to hacks. Instead, Layer 0 allows truly cross-chain decentralized applications to be built. Imagine you can deposit your coins on the Ethereum blockchain to maintain its security, but still being able to take advantage of higher yield opportunities on Solana. This is the use case that Layer 0 is able to unlock. Now, Layer 0 doesn't have a token yet, 
yet. However, their airdrop is expected to launch really soon in early 2024. A proxy bet you can make right now is with the Stargate token, which is also launched by Layer 0. Stargate Finance is the official bridge that's built using Layer 0's technology. There have also been a lot of speculation on the Stargate token being converted or rewarded the ZRO token later on, but nothing is confirmed. If you want to see how to qualify for the Layer 0 airdrop, our old guide on the Layer 0 airdrop is still relevant today, and you can check that out on the channel. The last cross-chain interoperability solution I have in the portfolio is Axelar, coming in at 1%. Axelar is a cross-chain protocol that's native to the Cosmos ecosystem. It plays a crucial role as a settlement bridge, which enables the transfer of assets into the Cosmos network from other ecosystems such as Ethereum or Solana. However, Axelar is also not just a bridge, but rather a generic message passing middleware layer, very similar to Chainlink CCIP and Layer 0. This means you can also build cross-chain decentralized applications using Axelar. I have also covered Axelar in depth in our Cosmos ecosystem deep dive. But long story short, here are a few standout points for Axelar. Number one is that in the latest RWA tokenization partnership between JP Morgan and Avalanche, Axelar is also in this partnership. And in fact, in their white paper that's jointly written with the Singapore Monetary Authority, they mentioned three interoperability solutions, Chainlink, Layer 0, and Axelar. But in fact, Chainlink wasn't actually used in this solution. Rather, it was mainly Axelar that was used for these DeFi token and message passing. So this is actually very interesting. This actually tells me Axelar's solution, technology-wise, could be a little bit ahead of Chainlink's CCIP solution, just in terms of cross-chain interoperability. Another thing that I have covered in my Cosmos video is the Axelar token price. So Axelar's ICO actually started at $1 per Axel token. And when you look at some of the private funding rounds, in fact, the latest private two sale that happened for Axelar in February 2022 also had a price of $1 per token. These are some of the largest institutional investors that invested in Axelar at $1. But when you look at Axelar's price today, that's only at 66 cents. So this means it's actually very undervalued even in the VC investors' eyes. They were willing to pay much higher prices than right now. So I think the price of Axelar has been very suppressed by the bear market, and this is likely to do a mean reversion, at least in the short term. And when you compare the fact that Axelar is just as mature of a technology solution to Layer 0 and Chainlink, with Layer 0 being potentially valued at the multiple billions and Chainlink already worth multiple billions of dollars in market cap, I think Axelar's token is quite undervalued today. That's why I also have Axelar in my portfolio coming in at 1%. And that concludes my top three picks in the cross-chain interoperability sector. In my opinion, the only three real players that you need in this sector are Chainlink, Layer 0, and Axelar. All other players are still building either last-gen solutions that is just some semi-centralized token bridge or require some form of closed ecosystem, for example, with Polkadot. There are certain projects that have great adoption in one unique vertical, for example, with Thorchain's Rune, but they have very limited functionality when compared to a general purpose messaging layer like Layer 0 Axelar or Chainlink CCIP. In the case of Thorchain's Rune, they're very focused on DeFi functionality with a cross-chain liquidity system, which works really well for swapping and lending across chains, but it doesn't do much more than that. Okay, moving on to the next sector, which is social media altcoins. And actually in this category, I only have one altcoin, and that is Diesel. Diesel stands for Decentralized Social, and I have covered this project multiple times before and even included it in my last year's portfolio video. Diesel is a layer one blockchain built specifically for social media applications. This project was actually originally launched as BitCloud, which you might have heard of on Twitter. The platform first introduced social tokens for influential accounts. Essentially, it's the early version of Frentech a year before Frentech even existed. But that launch was mostly a publicity stunt. It wasn't until after the stunt that the Big Cloud project rebranded to Diesel and revealed their larger vision of building this Diesel blockchain. Now, the reason why I like Diesel specifically for social media is for a couple of reasons. Number one, I think this is truly a hidden gem project based on how much money they have raised. Diesel actually raised over $200 million in a funding round. And today, they still have over $98 million in their treasury. Compare that to the token valuation 
valuation of just over $110 million. That is quite a low valuation compared to their book value. Number two, Diesel is truly miles ahead in terms of a blockchain built for social media. Sure, you have other blockchains like Solana, which is hyperscalable, or Filecoin that can store large amounts of data for cheap, but none of them combine everything together like Diesel with smart contracts functionality and cheap storage and the easy to build with application development kit that has already built all types of social media applications such as decentralized Twitter, decentralized social mobile app, decentralized video app for YouTube, decentralized TikTok clone, decentralized Spotify, decentralized search, Pinterest, etc. There's so many others that you can discover on this blockchain. And number three is that, well, when we mention social media and social five, we have to mention Frentech. But really, I'm not so bullish on Frentech as an investment in social media. I really think it's more of a glorified yield farm because people are simply depositing Ethereum and buying up people's keys in anticipation to farm this airdrop. That's it. Once the airdrop comes out, I don't see anyone else coming back to this app because what attracted these people are not social media, are not any content or connection or chats with other people. It's only the money. When you compare this with Diesel, it's completely different. It's truly built for a transparent and decentralized social media platform and the infrastructure that allows that. So for the everyday users, it's super easy to understand. People are finally opening up to the idea of having uncensorable content online with social media and decentralized social media. And I really think decentralized social media is one of the clearest use cases of blockchain whenever you pitch it to one of the traditional you know, retail investors that don't know how blockchains work. When you tell them, OK, I can have this YouTube or TikTok or Wikipedia that nobody can shut down and is completely transparent and contributed by the community, I think most people can buy into that idea. So this is really the sector that Diesel is going towards. And when you compare that with things like Frentech, that is completely two different categories. In my view, this area of truly decentralized social media meant for transparency and uncensorable content is bound to explode when people realize that social media should now have any finance as the target. But rather, it should be about zero cost onboarding, transparency, censorship resistant content. And in this sector, Diesel is the only project that I know that is still building towards this vision. So with all that being said, this is why I'm so bullish on Diesel. And I think it's the only project that's worth having in the decentralized social media blockchain plus social media sector. And that's why it's a huge part of my portfolio actually coming in at 4%. The next crypto sector in my portfolio is GambleFi or crypto casinos. And I also only have one project in here, and that is Robit. I have talked about Robit so many times on this channel at this point, but it really is the only crypto gambling platform that's worth investing in. You can check out my deep dive on Robit in our top three crypto to buy video in October, or even with our hidden gem crypto portfolio video from back in the days. But long story short, the thesis on Robit is really about their revenue. Robit is bringing in 100 times higher revenue than its second largest competitor, which makes all other GambleFi narrative projects completely irrelevant. Today, Robit's annual revenue stands at over $550 million, which is even five times larger than that of DYDX, the leading decentralized perpetual exchange. And when you put Robit side by side in terms of annual revenue, it sits right at the top five spot in terms of all crypto projects, including even Bitcoin and Ethereum. That ranking puts Robit right alongside Uniswap and Lido, which both have a market cap of multiple billions of dollars. I think the market is simply not efficient enough right now to price in the large earnings of Robit. This is why Robit is only trading at $500 million. This is why I will continue to hold my Robit RLB position until at least $2 to $3 billion in market cap. That would equal to about $0.70 cents to $1 in token price. I have quite strong conviction on Robit still, and that's why it takes up 3% of my portfolio. Next up, we are getting into crypto gaming and first with the gaming infrastructure projects. The first gaming infra project in my portfolio is Superverse with the ticker Super. Now, this project has been a major topic of discussion on my socials and Discord for the past few weeks. And currently, it's my biggest position in crypto gaming by far, coming in at 3%. And here is why. 
You see, Super was one of the earliest and most OG projects in the gaming sector, launching in February of 2021 before the gaming wave actually gained popularity later that year. While at face value, their original vision might not seem like much, with its Superverse DAO, which governs the whole treasury, and the game Imposters, which is a social deduction game based on the popular Among Us. However, they have some major shifts to be released in this upcoming cycle next year, which will make the Super token a no-brainer bet in crypto gaming. Now, I don't know their exact plans, but I have heard from their founder and fellow YouTuber Elio Trades that this next phase of Super is coming in early 2024 and will bring something that's never been done before in the space. Aside from the tease, here is what I speculate is happening. You see, Superverse is part of the ecosystem as Neo Tokyo, with Elio Trades and Alex Becker as the main founders. Neo Tokyo has seen tremendous success recently, with their citizen NFTs rallying from 3.6 Ethereum all the way up to 19. The new Tokyo Bytes token has also rallied from $2 all the way up to $19. Now, a lot of this is attributed to the Neo Tokyo community being connected to every major crypto gaming project. On their socials recently, they have partnered with literally every single crypto gaming and entertainment focused project in the space. So all the top founders and talent are gathered together in Neo Tokyo to progress together, which makes NT an easy bet on the gaming narrative. They have also invested in all the top upcoming games, such as Shrapnel or Midnight Society founded by Dr. Disrespect, or the latest one, Endless Clouds, which is the studio behind Treeverse, another major title coming up. So by being in their ecosystem, you can also get early investment deals. Now, this is all fine and good, but this Neo Tokyo opportunity is quickly getting out of reach for most people. The Neo Tokyo Citizen NFTs have a very high floor price at over 18 Ethereum or $42,000 while the Bytes token is only traded on Uniswap and there isn't that much liquidity on here for mass adoption. This is why I think the Super token will be the final missing piece tying everything together, which offers an easy way into their ecosystem for all gaming fans. The token has been trading for almost three years and is even listed on Binance, making it super accessible. Now, my entry range for Super was around 16 cents, and I have covered this many times on my Twitter and Discord in November. And throughout this price run, I have also covered my reload opportunities when uh, Super first made a correction down to around 32 cents. As you can see, this re-entry opportunity was another good call and this has gone up another 100% after. Now, I gotta be honest with you guys, I do think this current rally on Super is getting kind of overextended. We can see this with the VRVP indicator, which I have on the right of the chart here. What this indicator does is that it plots all of the previous price history and figures out where the significant support and resistance levels are based on previous trading volume. And as you can see, the biggest resistance range sits at between 60 cents and 80 cents, which is shown with this indicator that shows that uh, the previous price history has the most trading volume in this zone, which makes it the hardest level to break. That's why I wouldn't FOMO into this position right now. Instead, there are two entry opportunities I see. Number one is if price can come back down into this range as it gets rejected by the resistance, and I would ideally like to pick it up again between this lower uh, consolidation range between uh, 35 cents and around 42 cents. This would be really ideal. But if this correction doesn't happen, then I would ideally like to wait for price to continue grinding up and actually break above 87 cents as the final resistance. And then I will look to enter right here at this breakout retest. Because as we have previously shown, once this resistance range actually gets broken, the potential upside after will be much easier as there are way less previous uh, price history in higher ranges. And thus price will have a much easier time moving up. So that's why I would either enter on the correction or wait for the actual breakout to be confirmed. In terms of price target, I'm aiming for at least $1.60 to around $1.80 as the first exit. And I'll be watching their announcements in the new year to decide if this position becomes a long-term hold. The next gaming infrastructure project in my portfolio is Immutable X IMX, coming in at 1%. Immutable X really is the gaming layer 2 for Ethereum. To summarize, they use ZK Rollup technology to offer a zero-cost and instant transaction environment, which makes it perfect as a layer 2 solution for NFTs and gaming. And this focus on gaming is really what sets it apart from other layer twos like Arbitrum, Optimism, and Polygon, which cater to a broader range of applications. Now, I don't think IMX is the best layer two out there by far. In fact, I have covered it already in our layer two ranking video, and I only put it in the B tier. However, in the gaming infrastructure projects, 
it is still the market leader today. One upside that I like about Immutable is that they are really flexible in the type of scaling technology that they use. This shows in the different chains that they have. So today they have two chains. They have the Immutable X, which is a ZK rollup that's built using Starkware when Starkware was very popular in the last bull market. Then they also have a Immutable ZK EVM, which is built using Polygon's CDK solution. In the next cycle, we know that layer twos will be the main adoption point for Ethereum, and there are only a handful of competitors in this area. Since Immutable X is already quick to adapt to this moving layer two space, I think they will catch on and remain the top leader in the gaming layer two for the foreseeable future. In the last cycle, Starkware was all the hype because they were the first ZK layer two solution to the market. However, they were actually quite underwhelming and only was able to handle NFT transactions in a marketplace type of environment. It wasn't able to support smart contracts. This is why they were quickly replaced with things like ZK EVM in 2022, and Immutable quickly adopted this type of solution. So for this reason, I think IMX will continue to be a decent bet on the gaming layer 2 adoption in the next two to three years. Since IMX is a layer 2 instead of a layer 1, they are natively compatible with Ethereum, which also means they can remain relevant in the layer 2 wars. This is in stark contrast to most of the gaming layer 1s like Engine, Ultra, Wax, etc., which I think will all be left behind in this cycle as all of the upcoming solutions will be built using Ethereum instead of any other layer 1. Moving on, the next gaming infrastructure project I have in the portfolio is Beam coming in at 1%. I have covered Beam before in our top gaming cryptos video that you can check out on the channel. But long story short, Beam is a rebrand from a previous project called Mirror Circle, which started as a gaming guild in the play to earn crates, but quickly they realized that that model wasn't sustainable and they pivoted to an infrastructure project. This has led to a token migration from the MC token to the Beam token, which just finished in late 2023. Now, a couple of things I like about Beam, aside from just being a layer two for gaming, they also have a very large treasury that they have maintained from their time being a gaming focused investment DAO. Today, their treasury still stands at over $94 million. This includes over $36 million in cash reserves, which is super high. Most of the layer one projects cannot even boast these number of on-chain treasury that you can track transparently. This allows them to have a ton of runway to build whatever they want. And on top of this, they have $48 million in venture investments in a lot of top upcoming crypto games. For example, in Snack Club, Planet Mojo, Old Baby Games, Avalon is another good one, Treasure Dow, Amino, Shrapnel, which we'll cover in a bit, Vulcan Forged, etc, etc. So by getting into this project, not only are you getting the infrastructure play, but you're also getting proxy bets on all of the SAF investments that they have done across the entire gaming space. In terms of the technology, the Beam Layer 2 is actually built using the Avalanche technology stack today, which I am not necessarily a fan of because AVAX subnet is really just a knockoff version of Ethereum virtual machine and Ethereum itself. I think eventually Beam will become a Ethereum native Layer 2 using one of the technology stacks such as Polygon, OP, or even ZK Sync. The Beam team most likely knows this and by adopting Avalanche subnet first, that opens them up to become a layer two in the future because Avalanche is natively an EVM environment, which means they support MetaMask wallets and all of the Ethereum technology stack. Now, Beam today sits at $378 million, which when compared to Immutable X being also another layer two, that is quite undervalued. So this is how I like to treat Beam today. I think it's a discounted IMX that can compete in the exact same playground in the next cycle. Lastly, I also have 1% of my portfolio reserved for upcoming crypto gaming infrastructure projects. I think the gaming infrastructure space is still ripe for new projects to come up in this cycle, especially when the last crypto gaming bull run were fueled by play to earn projects and legacy layer one blockchains that no games are using anymore. The next wave of gaming infra projects will have to be interoperable with all major blockchains and focus on ease of integration with Web2 developers and really aim to make the games more fun instead of turning them into yield farms. Now, one of my top gaming infra projects coming up is Ready Games. I have covered this multiple times on the channel. In summary, they check all of the boxes that I have just mentioned. They support all major blockchains out there, including not only Ethereum and its EVM stack, but also things like Solana or even Polkadot if you wish to go that route. Their ecosystem is focused on getting real player accounts as the success metric, and they have integrated with over 100 studios 
studios lined up that's converting their Web 2 games into Web 3. Their total number of active players amounts to over 15 million. They have some serious Web 2 game partners that you can check out already. Good example of this is Zula, which is a CSGO copy clone that is really popular in third world countries, especially in Turkey. And this game you can access today on Steam and get this. It's actually one of the top 30 most popular shooting games on Steam right now by daily concurrent users. There's actively around 300 players online all the time. That is not an easy feat. And if you bring those numbers to any other Web3 game, it will be nowhere close. So the fact that Ready Games is actually onboarding real Web2 games with existing users, converting them into Web3 and using the ReadyX token itself as in-game currency, I think that's really cool design that somehow they have pulled off. So overall, upcoming gaming infra, I think still has a lot of adoption potential in this next cycle. And that's why I have reserved 1% of my portfolio for this sector. Moving on from the gaming infra, we also have the real Web3 games that you can play. The first project in the Web3 game sector is Prime. The Prime token is behind the popular trading card game called Parallel, which had a massive run in the NFT craze back in 2021. In short, this is a factions-based card collection game that you can use to battle and build your card decks and battle other players. Very similar to Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone or Marvel Snap, so what have you. Now, I like this game's style and aesthetics and the polish is actually very high. You can go try that out yourself. But one of the coolest points about Prime is its deep penetration in the DeFi and DGEN's mindshare. Essentially, the Prime token is one of the most popular on-chain tokens when it comes to crypto gaming. Most of the crypto and DeFi DGEM investors all really like this project. Now, aside from the parallel game, the Prime token is also trying to build their own ecosystem and integrating the token itself into multiple games. But we are yet to see that happen. Still, this is something you can look forward to. But truly, I think this is one of the rare combination of a game that is very popular in DeFi crowd, but also has a very well functioning game. Call it a next generation of GameFi, if you will. But I really like this token because it doesn't have any exact play to earn or high inflation mechanisms, but still it's very popular among the crypto Twitter, among insider communities in crypto. Small allocation of this, only 0.5% in my portfolio. Now the next Web3 game in my portfolio is actually a AAA level title, and that's called Shrapnel. Shrapnel is this Call of Duty like uh, shooter, first person shooter game with abil abilities built in, very similar to Valorant, but set in a more modern, realistic type of setting. Not only does Shrapnel have some really big backers, but one one of the biggest gaming creators on Twitch, Myth, is actually an advisor to this project. And here you can see him playing one of the earliest demos of the project in a conference. And you can check out some of the gameplay here as well. Now, Shrapnel has raised over $20 million to build this next generation of their shooter that is supposed to be comparable with Call of Duty, Warzone, and the likes of other AAA games. To be honest, this game doesn't have that much playable content out there yet. There are only a handful handful of trailers that you can see, but from what I've seen, it looks really good. So this is definitely one that's high up on the caliber, not like a mobile game or a, you know, a title that you play uh, that's across, you know, third world countries just for the sake of getting a lot of players. This is actually a game that is very good looking. And I would say, depending on how it comes out to look, it could be as comparable to things like Call of Duty. Now the Shrapnel token is live that you can trade today, and it's currently trading at 20 cents. The total supply of this token, I believe is 3 billion. So the current market cap is at 600 million. It's relatively okay. It's decently high, but not super overvalued in my opinion. Shrapnel is, I would say, one of the top five most anticipated AAA level Web3 games coming onto the market. This is actually one that has released their tokens very early on that you can get your hands on already. I think that's a big plus. That's why I think this token has been rallying a lot in this early bull market because there really isn't that many other choices in the AAA level games out there. Again, another title just I think really is worth having in my portfolio, but still a relatively small percentage only at 0.5%. Lastly, to round off the gaming sector, I have another 4% entirely reserved for upcoming Web3 games. There are actually a lot of good looking and super fun looking games coming onto the market in the next year. I'll give you a few examples that I'm really looking forward to. The first one is called Dead Draw, but this is actually a project made by none other than Dr. Disrespect 
to another one of the largest gaming creators on Twitch and probably the entire world. I would say top five gaming creators out there. This one is also another first person shooter. It has some RPG mechanics in there with a couple modes such as looting or evade mode or extraction mode. So it's not a purely a battle royale or purely a shooter game. There's also some mission aspects to it. Now you can check this game out already on Dr. Disrespect's stream channel directly. So just go on YouTube and search up that drop and you can see most of the content come from Dr. Disrespect directly. So from the gameplay that he has shown before, I think this one is a little bit ahead of uh, Shrapnel in its current development stage. It looks a little bit more polished, but still, I think this is kind of a work in progress. I think this is another one that is super hyped up and just by being associated with Dr. Disrespect alone will bring a lot of attention to this. So you can see this already. Not only is the doc playing it, his friend Tim the Tamman is also playing it and streaming it. And you can see other creators as well. Some had good things to say, some had bad things to say, but most of the gaming creators out there have made videos covering this. So there's a lot of buzz coming for this project for sure. Another game that I'm looking forward to is called Treeverse. This is a top-down 2.5D type of action RPG game that's focused on dungeon play, but also has a town and world system that you can socialize in. The art style kind of reminds me of Ragnarok Online if you are a OG RPG player, but the action is very smooth. I actually had the privilege of trying this game very early and I liked it a lot. So a lot of people are looking forward to this on Twitter as well. Again, this is one of the games that looks really good, plays really fun as well. It's quite challenging, but it's also very popular among crypto and Twitter degen communities. So definitely another one to pay attention to. A third one I'm looking forward to is called Apiron. So this is a game that you can already play on the Epic Game Store with their early access. And this is a game that is actually benefits a lot from having NFTs because this type of game is called God's Game. It involves a lot of collection of your, what you call these planets. So you start off being a planet and you can build your own little civilization on your planet and you can take advantage of your what's called dudes and <laughs> take these guys into battle in these roguelike dungeon uh, formats. Now I'm a fan of roguelites and I have actually tried this combat format in dungeon before in this game and I would say the combat actually looked really smooth and this is a year and a half before. So I think after all that development, I'm really excited to see their beta launch, which is coming really soon. According to their socials, they are targeting their token generation event and beta launch in early Q4 2023. So I think that is happening really soon. It might even be in the next couple months as well. So definitely pay attention to this one. Another game that you can try out today is called Spark Ball. So this game is already on early access on Steam and you can go ahead and play this yourself. So this is essentially a 3v3 half MOBA, half sports game. You can think of it like a cross between Rocket League and something like a Battle Right or League of Legends, but in a more simple format. So you have skills, you have characters, but the objective is not to take the other side's pylons or their base, but instead it's to score using the balls. So this is actually a very fun game, very challenging game. And I could see a lot of esports campaigns and esports tournaments being hosted on this. More recently, when they had their early access, they actually managed to get some large esports organizations on board, including Cloud9 and G2 that have signed on as assembled their teams to play this game at launch. So this is actually really cool. I haven't seen these types of involvements in esports coming in for Web3 games. So definitely another one to watch out for called Spark Ball. Okay, and the last game that I am quite excited about and I believe is launching quite soon is called Citizen Conflict. This is another third person shooter game. This one is not as triple A level feeling. So the graphics you can see it's more 2.5 A, I guess if, if you can call it that. It's kind of cross uh, platform compatible. It's more towards kind of a mobile slash desktop crowd that doesn't have as strong of a PC to support a game like this. But there's a lot of content here. There's a lot of heroes, a lot of maps, a lot of NFTs to collect different skins, different weapons. So very rich content system that works really well typically when you have a Web3 NFT based game. Now this game is coming on the Epic Game Store really soon. So you can try this out very soon just by downloading and playing yourself. Some of the actually really promising stats for this game. So they have 71,000 weekly 
active users and apparently they are the top three game and top number one collectible on bnb chain right now and also the number one game and number four decentralized application overall on polygon so you can find all these stats on dap radar and this ties into the entire ecosystem as well not only the citizen conflict game but also the corporal world which includes all of their nfts overall not really a i would say triple a level game but definitely a lot of users a lot of content and that's something I can definitely get it behind. So I would try out this game as soon as it comes out on Epic Games. Okay, so those are some of the upcoming Web3 games that I'm excited about, but I'm sure there will be a lot more fun titles dropping in the next year as we finally get some really fun games and playable games coming to the market instead of the play to arm trash garbage that we had last cycle. So excited about that. And that's why I have an entire 4% of my portfolio reserved to get into these new games this year. Okay, moving on, just a couple more sectors. Now we have the AI crypto sector. And the first altcoin in this sector is Render Network. I have covered Render in my top crypto to buy in November video. You should go check that out for more deep dive info. But long story short, uh, Render is a distributed GPU rendering platform, which allows anyone with powerful graphics cards to share their graphics processing power with other users on the network. Now, initially, Render was meant for you know rendering graphics, and 3D models, etc. Now Render is heavily moving towards the direction of using their GPUs for AI, and they have gone through a branding as well to highlight this. Therefore, I think a bet on a decentralized network capable of, of harnessing this GPU rendering power from the masses is a direct bet on the demand of AI. As AI becomes more and more popular, the GPU demand will become higher and higher, and thus the higher and higher demand for these decentralized GPU marketplaces and networks, and thus render networks utility and token price should go up with it. Other than the AI adoption, there are also a couple more catalysts coming up for render, such as their burn and mint equilibrium uh, token model that is a new upgrade. They also have their potential integration with Apple's Vision Pro product line, uh, which comes from render's parent company, Otway, that is behind the Octane render engine, which is a relatively popular engine used in uh, traditional technology. And then you have the IO Net, which is claiming to be the world's largest GPU decentralized physical infrastructure network or DP. Pin, and this will be an easy way for anyone to rent GPU directly from Render. Next up in the AI altcoin sector, we have Akash Network, which takes up 1% of my portfolio. The Akash Network is an open source and decentralized cloud solution that allows users to buy and sell computing resources securely and efficiently. This is one of the main and only competitors to Render Network because Akash also has a working decentralized GPU network. You can access this today on akashml.com and you can reserve your own NVIDIA H100 and A100, you know, supercomputer GPUs that you can use uh, in AI model training, etc. Now, here's why I think Akash is undervalued. For starters, Akash's fully diluted market cap is at $350 million, which is much lower than its number one competitor, Render, with $1.7 billion fully diluted. The Akash cloud is also fully functional, and you can go and just, you know, connect your wallet and find your actually templates from different things you can deploy on this GPU cloud and start, you know, training models. They have things like code generation models similar to GitHub Copilot. They have language models similar to ChatGPT. They have image generation models like Stable Diffusion. So all of the most popular models you can already train using Akash GPUs. And these are all directly on the Akash cloud. I think with the maturity of the Akash cloud platform, this really puts the Akash project in front and center at the combination of a decentralized cloud for rendering and a decentralized AI platform. So being one of the only working infrastructure projects in this space of AI and GPUs, I think Akash is quite undervalued compared to how high render is already at. So even though Akash is not as established, I still think it deserves a spot in my portfolio and that's why it's still 1% in my portfolio today. Okay, to round out the AI sector in my portfolio, I have another full 4% reserved for upcoming AI crypto projects. I only have two AI projects in my portfolio right now because I think the cross-section between AI and blockchain is still quite early. There are a lot of projects exploring, you know, things like decentralized AI model training, the 
decentralized AI model inference, decentralized AI, AI agents, etc. But a lot of things are too early, in my opinion, and it doesn't really tie into how crypto economics and the token models can work well to make the AI parts better. Most of the time, they're just trying to slap two things together in order to get into the narrative. One of the only areas that I think does make sense long term is these decentralized GPU network, because it's one of the proven models that can harness the crowd GPU processing power from the masses and dedicate them towards a few high demand areas such as AI. So this is why I am very bullish on other GPU networks to come up in the market because there are only two in the market right now. I think this sector will see a lot of potential growth. So with that said, here are a couple more AI projects that I'm looking forward to, which haven't launched yet. The first one is called GPU Net. This is another decentralized GPU network, very clear branding here with their domain GPU.net and very similar model to Render and Akash. And I do believe they have a much larger inventory of high-end NVIDIA graphics cards, A100 and H100, which are the supercomputer level GPUs that can be rented on their marketplace, actually much more than uh, Akash's inventory. So this is something that got me super excited about them. Another one that have intrigued me in the past couple months is called Blue Whale. So this is a AI personalization protocol that also gathers the Web3, I think, on-chain data and gives them context, basically mapping a total of 200 170 million plus users in this vector graph and use them to enhance decentralized applications and enhance their front end. Now, I'm not sure how this can apply in a real use case, but this is one project that also has caught a lot of people's radar as well. So this is another one that I'm watching. I also don't know if they will have even a token at all or what valuation it will be. So I'll also keep you guys updated on that. Another AI project that have me intrigued recently is this AIT protocol. This is a project that claims to be at the intersection of blockchain and AI. They call themselves a Web3 data infrastructure with annotated data for AI model training that can supposedly revolutionize the combination of AI and Web3. Now, I haven't tried out this platform yet, but there is a lot of buzz about this project's launch by the end of 2023. One interesting point to note is that AIT is incubated by the PalMind project, which has been one of the best performing AI altcoins in the entire space in 2023. So the fact that AIT is incubated by the same team gives me a lot of confidence that this product should be able to deliver on something unique when they launch it. AIT also just announced their IDO recently, which will be exclusively offered to PAL token stakers. There are no public dates on this launch yet, but this token launch should be a really good opportunity if you can manage to get in on the IDO offer because the valuation is quite low coming in at 15 million and there's no vesting. So it's a really good public launch deal. I'll be posting updates about this launch when it happens on Twitter and Discord. So make sure to follow me there. And lastly, make sure to check out my deep dive video on AI projects for November because I also covered the super popular BitTensor Tau project in that video. So long story short, I don't have any BitTensor Tau in my long-term portfolio because while the coin did amazingly well in the end of 2023, I do think it's more of a short-term hyped up trade rather than a long-term hold for me personally. I have addressed a lot of my concerns in that video that you should go check out. Basically, the technology of BitTensor has some red flags because uh, some of their GitHub repos doesn't have a lot of updates and their block explorer tends to be down quite often and the current applications built on BitTensor are quite limited. So I think the technology is kind of still in its early stages. And because they take a very similar tokenomics model to that of Bitcoins with a halving schedule and a mining token inflation, that means the current token inflation is quite high because the project just launched in 2023. So considering those points, I think the future of BitTensor in a very long term is kind of still up for discussion. And that's why I put it in a top altcoin to pay attention to in the short term, but maybe not yet as a long-term pick for me personally. Okay, that wraps up the AI sector of my crypto portfolio. And that leaves us with only one last sector, and that is with meme coins. So I'll just directly show you the three meme coins that I have in my portfolio today because, well, there's not much to talk about them. They're meme coins. So they are PayPay, Dogecoin, and Shiba Inu, each coming in at 1%. So here's my thesis on meme coins. Like it or not, meme coin is a major category in crypto. 
just like AI, DeFi, gaming, layer ones, layer twos, metaverse, LSD, and whatever else. And for the sake of diversification, it's really worth having meme coins in your portfolio as they are very separate from the other categories. When you look at things that we already covered, when you have the layer ones, well, they kind of overlap with layer twos and a lot of the layer twos overlap with DeFi because things like Arbitrum and ZK Sync are DeFi focused. Then you have things like LSDs, which already kind of overlap with Ethereum because, well, they're based on Ethereum staking, so they live or die with Ethereum. You have the cross-chain stuff, which are also very DeFi driven because they involve a lot of cross-chain uh, token bridging. Then you have things like gaming infrastructure and Web3 games, which are pretty much just one sector alone. And you see some of these infrastructure are also meant to be layer twos, which again, overlap with layer two. So you see a lot of these sectors in crypto actually overlap. And in order for you to build a very diversified portfolio that tends to you know hold its value over the long term, you need to have somewhat decoupled categories of altcoins. And that's where I think meme coins can really shine because they are they're meme coins. They don't have any long-term utility that tie into any specific technology. Uh, but meme coins are one of the longest running crypto narratives. And by design, they are hard to die because there are no expectations. As long as there's an exchange, there's some trading volume, and most importantly, there's a large community, then the meme coin will live on. There are really no risks of meme coin being a security because they are not controlled by any single entity. This also means they really cannot suffer a hack. It's just a token and they don't have any insider stumping because most meme coins have majority of the supply circulating. This also gives them, you know, prevents them from a lot of the pitfalls that other technology startups and technology solutions can fall victim to when they're trying to improve their protocols. So all in all, I think meme coins are worthy of a spot in your portfolio, albeit even if you want only a small percentage. For me, the breakdown looks like this. I have 1% in Dogecoin because uh, Dogecoin is the original meme coin everyone already knows and loves. And it has the dark horse scenario in case Elon Musk and X ends up integrating it. That could really pump the price. The other meme coin I have is Shiba Inu's SHIB token. This is the only meme coin project that has a real team and is building products for it. So they have built a lot of stuff in the bear market, including their own layer two called Shibarium. And they have built multiple tokens that you can farm with liquidity pools. They have their own decentralized exchange called Shiba Swap. They have built their own NFT collection. They have even built their own metaverse. They have built their own game. So all in all, they have a real team behind it. And I think this is one of the only meme coins that has products that's still being built. And last but not least, the one meme coin that I think has the most potential is PayPay. So PayPay is the most explosive meme coin in recent times. Whenever the market rallies, it always catches the first wave. We have already seen this in the late 2023 rally when Bitcoin made a huge run up in October of 2023. PayPay was one of the first coins to follow that wave and has since been consolidating. So since PayPay didn't launch as early as the other meme coins it actually launched in the bear market in 2023. This means it has just gone through its first initial hype wave and almost all tokens are now circulating as you can see on the supply here. So if you dig into the supply charts on Etherscan, you'll see that the team of PayPay holds only about $3.5 million worth, which is 0.7% of the total supply. So all the supply is pretty much circulating. There's no insiders to dump. So going forward, the real question is, can PayPay live on as a long-term meme coin like Dogecoin or Shiba? I think there's a decent chance for this because think about this. When people think about the Doge, they think about the Dogecoin. This is the true effect that the Dogecoin has managed to penetrate into the meme itself. Now, how recognizable is the PayPay meme when compared to the Doge meme? I would argue that they are just as popular. So is it possible that eventually when people look at PayPay the frog and they will think of this PayPay token meme coin, is that possible? I think it's a low probability, but certainly possible. So if this close relationship of uh, this PayPay token becoming the official meme coin behind the meme itself, that will be a huge out there community that is worth to be discovered and 
brought in. And that is truly the, I would say, upside potential that I see in PayPay. It's not a high chance for this to happen, but the potential return is very high. And that's why I think PayPay is still worth investing in as just a dark horse pick in the meme coin scenario. I really don't like trading new meme coins for the short term hypes as there are way too many scams to go to zero. But I will continue to hold these three memes, Doge, SHIB, and PayPay in my portfolio because I think memes will continue to capture a significant chunk of the crypto market's mindshare. Okay, so now you know exactly how I'm making my ultimate crypto portfolio for 2024. These are all 29 altcoins that I have in my portfolio with their exact breakdowns. As you can see, building a quality portfolio is all about finding quality investment and keeping them diversified, never putting all eggs in one basket. I also did a little bit of analysis analytics, which is very interesting. So looking at the portfolio breakdown, the largest percentages of individual altcoins that I have, aside from Bitcoin and Ethereum, the largest percentage of 4% in Chainlink and Diesel, which means these two altcoins are actually my most bullish altcoin picks if you need specific picks. I know this is a very common question that I get. Uh, right below that, I have 3% in Robit and 3% in Super. So these two are also very high conviction place for me personally. Now, in terms of top portfolio sectors, this is also very interesting. So the largest sector in my portfolio is actually DeFi coming in at 10%. So I am actually the most bullish on DeFi, believe it or not, according to my portfolio that I planned for myself. Right after that, we have 7% in AI sector and 6% in gaming infrastructure, 5% in crypto games. So if you combine the gaming infra and games together, that gives 11%. So if you include gaming overall, that's 11% in gaming. So I guess I'm also super bullish in gaming. And then after that, you know, layer two is 4%, layer one, 4%, cross chain, social, all at 4%. And then the lower percentages, meme coin and gambofi. This is my portfolio breakdown by sector. Also very interesting, even for my own sanity check. I really hope this portfolio has been helpful for you guys. Uh, as I strongly believe early 2024 will be the final window of opportunity to accumulate quality projects. If you have been on the fence and don't know which projects to get into, hopefully this guide can serve as a starting point to do your own research. If all catalyst events for Bitcoin go as planned, Bitcoin and altcoins will really start to accelerate their growth in the second half of 2024 and lead to the actual bull run in 2025. Again, even though I have given you guys my exact portfolio breakdown, please, please do your own research and fact check my research and also consider which sectors you find to be bullish the most on. And you don't have to have the exact same portfolio as I do, because I do shift these around every year, as you can tell with this year's video. That's it for today's video. If you found this video helpful, share it with a friend and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future videos. I am actually working on a hidden gems portfolio video for 2024, which will highlight only the low cap high potential projects that may not have made it into today's portfolio list. Lastly, follow me on X at virtualbacon0x. This is where I drop day-to-day -day crypto alpha when I'm doing in-depth research for my videos. Uh, usually I drop alpha there first before they make it onto the videos and live streams. And last but not least, join our Discord on discord.gg slash virtualbacon or with a link in the description. You can find more crypto trading signals and alpha discussions in our free VIP program. Make sure to join the discussion there. And if you have any questions, you can find me there as well. For everything else, you can find all of my socials and content links on virtualbacon.com. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.